Hold on. You might want to be in the video. No, I mean, they're going to be able to hear me, but they're going to only see the PowerPoint. Well, they're looking at you right now. Like, you're in. Wait, show me the Okay, this is a practice round. We'll see how this goes. I may need an extender cord, but we are recording right now. Okay, the, the screen, I know it may be a little bit difficult to see, uh, but hopefully you guys can see it. This is for those of you who are not here. We're just going to kind of complete what we have been doing um, the last couple of days. So we left off with uh, talking about big business, right? All right, so we were talking about getting ready to talk about monopolies and what a monopoly is, what a monopoly does. I don't know which class I said what, but we're going to figure it out. So where are we? We're the rise of big business. We talked about Vanderbilt. Are we at define monopoly? Yes. Okay. So we talked a little bit about what a monopoly is and the importance of having a monopoly. Obviously, if I'm in a business, I want to control the entire market, right? If I can control the entire market, then I'm making all the business. And I think we left off talking about a little bit that... You know, there's different ways to create a monopoly, right? I can create a monopoly because I am the only one, but then I can kind of create a monopoly because I control the means of production or I control all the advertising. So we said today there are people who are technically not a monopoly, but because they control the marketing of a particular product, um, they pretty much dominate that market. Uh, and so examples were things like Band-Aid and Kleenex. What do you call things that you clean your ears out with? You, so you all said Q-tips. Q-tip is a company that makes cotton swabs, right? But you guys call it a Q-tip because they dominate the marketing of that product. You can't think of another brand name that makes cotton swabs other than Q-tip, right? So in many ways, they have a monopoly. So to, to, to define a monopoly is a any company, why is this not going? So a monopoly is any company that dominates a market. I don't know if that's on the previous slide. I don't know what's slowing this down. Yeah, there it is. So a monopoly <laughs> is when someone tries to gain a monopoly, complete control of a product or a service. Complete control. What's the bad thing about a monopoly? We talked about this a little bit. What's bad about that? It really takes away from your consumers. It hurts the consumer, right? We, we said that, gave that example, and I know I'm kind of reiterating all of this, but we gave that example, but this is very important. If, I don't remember who was selling, Amir, Amir was selling uh, cupcakes and who else was selling them? Skyler. And Skylar was selling cupcakes, right? Remember, if Amir is able to control the cupcake selling here at Hillgrove, he has no incentive to do a good job. He doesn't have to put anything into customer service. He doesn't have to put anything into his product. He doesn't have to put anything into advertising. If he's the only cupcake game in, in Hillgrove, he can, he can manipulate the consumer. He could jack up his prices. He could create a bad product. But think about this if it was a service. If you're the only doctor within 100 miles, what is your incentive to be a good doctor? Nothing. You don't have an incentive. You don't have a business incentive, right? That's the problem when one person controls a market. It doesn't make a difference how bad that doctor is. Are you going to him? Yeah. Yeah. Or that dentist, right? Yeah. Or that plumber? You're gonna call him because there's no one else to call. 
He dominates. He has complete control over the market. So the person that's hurt in a monopoly is the consumer. When there's competition, as long as Scholar is still selling cupcakes, Amir has to figure out how to sell a better cupcake. He's got to figure out how to have better customer service. He's got to figure out how to advertise better than Scholar. The consume he has to have, he has to make his prices competitive so that people will go to him. Because if Scholar is selling his cupcakes 50 cent less than what Amir is selling, everybody's going to go to Scholar because he's, his, his product is cheaper. So if you think about grocery stores, they work this way. Publix, is the customer service at Publix better? Absolutely, right? Because that's what they advertise. This is where shopping is a, is a pleasure. But what's Kroger trying to sell you on? The prices, the prices right? And that's their, that's their model. Their model is something like that. Kroger, better prices, better something, right? Better prices, better product, or something like that. Their thing is they're trying to sell you on the idea that, yeah, it's cuter over at Publix, but you're going to pay less over here for the same product. All right? So better prices. All right, so the, the next box says, what steps are taken to form a monopoly? Uh, companies either bought out competition or they drive them out of business. Okay, so that's that second box. Right there, that third bullet. Okay? So think about this, okay? Let's say, once again, let's talk. take a grocery store Let's say I have a grocery store, Taylor has a grocery store, and Brianna has a grocery store, okay? Taylor's grocery store um, is just like my grocery store. We're really selling the same product. She's on one side of town, I'm on another side of town, and Brianna's on another side of town, okay? So people basically decide who they're gonna shop with pretty much based on where they live, okay? But Taylor, when she got her grocery store, she took out a loan. She went to the bank and the bank gave her a loan and she took that money and she went and opened up a grocery store. So what does Taylor have to do with her profits? She has to pay back her loan, right? So Taylor has to make a certain amount of money because she has to pay this what? She has to pay this loan. Brianna doesn't have a loan but she's paying high rent for the store, for the actual building. She doesn't own the building that her store is in. So she has to pay rent to the owner of the building so that she can have her grocery store. Once again, she has to make a certain amount of money because she has to do what every month? Amen. She has to pay the rent. Does that make sense? Everybody? She has to pay rent on the building? I am independently wealthy. I made money somewhere else. So I bought the building where my store is, and I have no loan because I had enough money to start my store without a loan. Right? Who's in an, who is in an advantage? I am. So let's say I do this. I cut all the prices in my store 25%. Right? Am I going to lose money? Yeah. Cutting prices, I'm losing what? I'm losing money. I mean, I cut, I cut it 25% on everything in the store. Can Taylor do that? <clears throat> she can't afford it because she has to pay her what? A She's got to make a certain amount of money in order for her to pay back her loan. Can Brianna do that? She cannot do that because she has to make a certain amount of money in order to pay her rent. What happens though after a period of time when my prices are 25% or even let's go 50%, everybody's going to start going to where? And people are going to come from the other side of town. People who live right next to Brianna's store are going to drive all the way across town to get these good prices. Right? So after a couple of months, when they're not making money and they can't pay their loan and Brianna can't pay her rent, I come to Taylor and I say, hey Taylor, I know things are rough on you. Taylor's gonna look at me and say, man, you SOB, you know exactly what you're doing. I said, man, I'm just, just, just a businessman, Taylor. But here's what I'll do for you. 
How about I buy your story? You take the money that I, I'm going to give you, you pay off your loan, you go do something else. You cut your losses. You're not taking it? Okay. Well, Taylor, this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to keep my prices low and customers aren't going to come to your store and eventually you're going to do what? You're going to go out of business and then I'll buy your store and then I'll buy it from whoever else owns the spot. Or you can take my deal right now, put a little money in your pocket, pay off your loan, go on to the next thing. You're going to have to go do something else. But at least you're out of debt. You're going to have two loans. You're going out of business one way or another, Tyler. <laughs> Either you're going to go out the hard way or you're going to let me help you and pay off that loan because that loan ain't going nowhere. Whether you're in business or not, you still owe the bank that loan. Which one are you going to do, Tyler? You're going to take my deal. Now, there are people who say, you know what? Forget you. I don't want your money. I'm going to try to sell my store to somebody else. But I won't sell it to you, not the guy who put, put me out of business. But money on the table is money on the table. I'm going to give you enough money for you to pay off your loan and put a little money in your pocket so you can walk away and go do something else. Let's say your loan is $100,000. I'll buy your store for one fifty. You pay off your loan. You walk away fifty thousand well, dollars. Like, uh, You're gonna pay off the loan. You pay interest little by little. We, if you pay off the loan, you don't owe any interest. I'm gonna put enough money in your pocket for you to pay off your your loan. You gonna take my deal? Okay. Now I own what? Two, Two stores. I'll cut my prices another ten percent now. Now, with Taylor's store, I don't touch it. I leave that store looking just like it looked. I leave the name on it, Taylor Grocery. Everybody in the neighborhood thinks they're still buying from Taylor. I don't touch it. I let it look just like it always looked. Right? But now, Brianna's the only person left, so I cut my prices another 10%. I really squeeze Brianna. Brianna? Hey, I know it's tough on you, Brianna, you know. Now, remember, I just made money because I just bought this store. Uh, Brianna, how about I buy your store? You're not doing it? Brianna, I know that that, that rent got to be hitting every month, baby. You know, they're going to put you out. If you don't pay your rent, they're going to put you out this store. I'll save you the embarrassment of having all your stuff stuck out in the parking lot and getting evicted from the place. I'll save you that. Guess what, Brianna? I'll leave it Brianna's grocery store. And forever, <coughs> your legacy will always be there. Brianna, you taking my deal? Hey, I'm putting a little money in your pocket. You can go do something else. If you want, you and Taylor can go team up and go do something else. Y'all both got a little money right now. Or you can get evicted <laughs> and get all your stuff put out in the park lot. You going to take my deal? Absolutely. Now I own all three grocery stores. What do I do with my prices? I throw them through the roof. All the money that I lost, squeezing you guys out, I'm going to make it back in a month because I'm going to shoot my prices through the roof. And who's going to stop me? Is what I just did nice? No, it's not nice. Is it good business? Yes. Absolutely. Right. Who gets hurt? They're not really hurt. Everyone except you, basically. They're not hurt. Yeah, they lost their business. But they can go open up another business. It's you guys, the consumers. It's the community. And you don't even know what. You don't even know what happened. You don't even know that you're being hurt. This one day you're going to come back to the grocery store and go, man, we walked over here, what? 
that grocery store bread is only a dollar fifty cent, and you gonna walk in there and go, whoa, what happened? Bread's three dollars. What happened to the prices? Well, I gotta have bread. And guess what you gonna do? You gonna pay them three dollars for that bread? You. Matter of fact, Taylor, she got attitudes, and she ain't gonna buy in my store. But eventually, Taylor, you know what you're going to do? If you're living in that area, you're going to come to that grocery store. No, you won't. Because you know what you're doing in? You're losing money. You're losing money. You just made yo, You just made that loaf of bread that you drove 30 minutes to go get. You just made that a real expensive loaf of bread. Trying to avoid paying my prices. All right, last one. With competition, products, product qualities go what? Does the quality go up or down? It goes down. Product price goes up. Oh, I'm sorry. With competition, quality goes up and prices go down. Without competition, with monopolies, product quality goes down and product price goes up. So the next thing is a trust. A trust is really just a monopoly. That's all it is. So I say closely connected concept to monopoly is the trust. What is a trust? Companies assign their stock to a board of trustees who combine them into a new, more powerful organization. So a trust is simply a giant company, of, a giant company of companies. That's what a trust is. A giant company of companies. Why would different companies come together to form a trust? Why would you do that? You're still just trying to dominate a market. <clears throat> what would be a good what would be a good group of companies to come together to try and dominate a market? AT&T, Verizon, like the Sprint. Right? So AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon all came together to dominate the cell phone market. They could do that. They would be a trust. And you can still think that you, you have AT&T, you have Sprint, you have Verizon, but in all reality, they're all one big what? They're all one big company. And they're dominating the market. Right? Or let's say you've got somebody who is selling tires. If the number one leading rubber maker and the number one leading tire person comes together to develop a to develop one company, they could dominate and squeeze everybody else out. Because of the power that they have collectively, they can do things that other people can't do. So a trust is just a giant group of companies coming together to try and dominate the market. Everybody understand that? So in, essentially a trust is just a big monopoly. So this is, this political cartoon, you see this all the time, you probably will see it on your test. What it says, the bosses of the Senate. This is what ends up happening. These companies, and you see the Copper Trust, the Steel Bean Trust, the Standard Oil Trust, the Sugar Trust. These big companies become more powerful than the what? Individual. Then, well, not individuals. Who, who, do, they, who do they represent? The individual. No, they represent the Senate. That's why I said the bosses of the Senate. Oh. Business owners can then become more powerful than the government. Right? How do they become more powerful than the government? They're making so much money. They're making so much money that things don't happen unless they allow it to happen. Right? If you have a if you have a a business that dominates 
oil, one company that dominates oil, well, if oil production shuts down, a whole lot of problems are going to happen in the economy. Right? Think about that. If we couldn't get gasoline because one person controlled gasoline, and he shot prices up to where we couldn't really afford it, that's going to have a reciprocal effect on the entire economy. Because if I have to pay $7 a gallon on, on, on gasoline, there's some other things I can't do what? I can't buy. That's going to have a problem in the economy. If people aren't spending money, the economy doesn't work. The economy needs people to go out and spend money, to put money in the economy. We have to understand that. So big business owners, these big business guys, what this uh, political cartoon is saying is that they could potentially become more powerful than even the U.S. government. Because then what do senators attempt to do, government officials? Appeal to these big business owners in order to get elected. Right? They become the bosses. All right, go up there on the back. As closely connected concept to monopolies, a trust, what is a trust? A giant company of companies. Why would different companies come together and form a trust? To use each other's power and resources. And we've seen merging of certain companies together to try and gain stability. That's not necessarily a monopoly. Like, what are we seeing a lot with fast food chains? Or some fast food chains? Checkers and Rally, stuff like that. So those are competition. They're in competition with each other. Well, I thought they didn't only hear them together. I thought they joined. Checkers and who? Rallies. And rallies? Yeah, I thought people, whenever I hear it, I hear them together. But I'm, no, those are two separate things. Oh, all right. I don't know. What, but what have you started to see? KFC and, KFC and Taco Bell. They're, they're coming together to see if they can be stronger together than they are separate. Because they're trying to compete with some of the other uh, fast food chains that are bigger. Also, if you've ever noticed, guys, anytime something pops up somewhere, the competition pops up like right across the street or yeah. right down the street, right? Yeah. Like you don't see one gas station. There's always a gas station and there's another one right across the street. Right? So there's always one that says, I don't want people making U-turns and coming back to this gas station. I want to get all the traffic coming this way and let him get all the traffic going that way. There'll be the competition between one another. Right? Okay, if there's a McDonald's somewhere, not too far away is working. Right? Okay. If Chick-fil-A is somewhere, Saxby's gonna to try to be somewhere close. They don't want any they don't want the competitor dominating an entire area. Uh, is there anything on your sheet about vertical and horizontal integration? No, right? Jumps to J.D. Rockefeller. Is that where we are? That's on the other sheet that I gave you. Yeah, so that's what happened. Go to that other sheet that I gave you. Because remember I said this sheet is in between the two that you have on the back. So go to your sheet that talks about J.D. Rockefeller. Notes 10. Notes 10. And, and this is the first thing says, J.D. Rockefeller is what? He's an oil tycoon who utilized the railroad in order to expand his business. This guy was one of the most powerful people in American history, J.D. Rockefeller. Those of you who've been in New York, heard of the Rockefeller Center. He founded the Standard Oil Company. 
Oh, there it is. He talks about vertical and horizontal integration. Don't worry about examples of Rockefeller. I don't think that's necessary. It does ask you how would Vanderbilt's railroad impact Rockefeller and Carnegie's company. And this is it. They use the railroad system to expand their business. Use the railroad system to expand their business. Let's go ahead. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, who Andrew Carnegie was also, I uh, had the U.S. Steel. I think we already filled him out, maybe. Did we do that? Andrew Carnegie, he dominated the steel industry. We won't talk about we'll skip vertical and horizontal integration. We'll go straight down here to Robert Barron's down there at the bottom, or the middle of the page. So they begin to just see it as they begin to see this whole consolidation and vertical integration and horizontal integration. They begin to see it as a monopoly. So it says the consolidation of businesses took away competition. It caused prices to remain high in the end, hurting the consumer. Or really, not just the consumer, but the person that really hurt was the poor. You know, rich people could afford it. Poor people couldn't. This is why they were given the name of Robert Man. So the manipulation of the market to make stupid profit. That's what's called a robber bear. But the other connotation was that they were captains of industry. So that there was positives. The growth of these large companies, it created jobs. So there are people who look at people like Bill Gates and, said, and say, no one should be that rich. I read a report that said that Bill Gates is so rich that if he were to walk past $100, it's not worth his time to stop and pick it up. He makes more money than that hundred dollars in the time that he has to stop, turn around, and go pick it up. He already made more money than that. Not worth his time. That's the kind of money this guy is raking in. At least at one point. I, I'm assuming he's still making crazy money. So these people, but what's great about Microsoft? It's created an entire market. Think about how many people are employed by Microsoft. Think about how many people who are employed by Google or employed by Apple. Yeah, Steve Jobs was stupid rich, but he also created something that a lot of people have benefited from. So that's the idea as a, of a captain of industry, that it brought jobs to the masses and were allowing America to compete in the global market. These people have done something that's good, not just for themselves, but for others. Coach Long? Yes. Can we go off to Jones for dismissal, please? Sure. Thank you. 
Rockefeller and Carnegie also practiced philanthropy. They gave away millions of dollars. That's why there's so many things all the way all across the United States that are named after Carnegie or named after Rockefeller. A lot of universities have Carnegie buildings because he gave a tremendous amount of money towards education and colleges. So there's two sides to this. In one way, these robber barons are bad for the consumer, they're bad for government, they're bad for the economy. But on the second hand, they also do, do some wonderful things. And there's a lot of good that comes out of having large companies. Like I told you before, is Microsoft a monopoly? Absolutely. Is it a good monopoly? Absolutely. And that's the interesting thing. When you keep, if that monopoly decides to play fair and keep prices low and treat consumers right and continue to work on customer service and continue to do things the right way, then that makes, that makes it a good monopoly. Okay? It's kind of like having a king. Are kings bad? Well, of course, for us, we like having a democratic government, right? We don't want all the power of government in the hands of one person. But like we talked about during the American Revolution, a collection of people can trample people's rights the same way one man can. Right? If that one man is fair and just and honest, potentially he can govern just as well as an elected body of officials. So how did the branch of government eventually address the problem of monopolies? They start to pass laws. They passed this law called the Sherman Antitrust Act. You need to know that. So it says Congress, Sherman Antitrust Act. You don't really need to know exactly what the law says. You just need to know that that's the law that tried to limit the power of corporations. It broke up monopolies that were accused of anti-competitive conduct. So like what I did to Brianna and what I did to Taylor, the government then comes in and says, hey, that's, that wasn't fair. That wasn't right. You can't do that. They begin to create laws to prevent people monopolizing the system. Monopolies become illegal. Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, we use his authority to further limit the power of these corporations, calling him a trust buster. So the president attempts to limit the power of, of Congress. And Teddy Roosevelt, in particular, really made it a point. He did not like trust. He did not like monopolies. He didn't like the feeling that a person like J.D. Rockefeller or Andrew Carnegie was more powerful than the U.S. government or Congress. And Bill Gates is in this category in the sense that the U.S. Congress, they've been forced to write new tax laws just for him. Like, how are we going to tax this person? And the Supreme Court, they ruled against the Standard Oil and they forced it to break into numerous smaller companies because they deemed it a monopoly. That was one of the first big companies to fall underneath these antitrust laws. Time on that. What time? Eleven twenty-nine. We're gonna stop there. Okay. So I'll finish this packet online, probably finish it on Monday, and then uh, we'll go from there, okay? And I'll post this video. So those of you who are not here, please make sure that you...
Go on to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, ask any questions that you want. Even those of you who are here can do the same thing. Uh, be ready to rock this week, guys. We'll be doing a lot. Taylor, question. The president just put that he limit, he attempted to limit the power of trust. We don't really need to know specific things that he did, as long as you understand that the power that the president used presidential powers, executive powers to limit the power of trust. All right. See you guys then.